Due to a sudden influx of new and trained workforce in the market, my hours as a body shop mechanic were cut short, and this brought a sudden and rapid financial strain on me. Because totally unsuspecting of this sudden and new change, I didn't have any money saved up that I could fall back on. Thinking of making some quick bucks during my downtime, I figured I'll work a summer job until my regular work hours would pick up again. Fortunately, I didn't have to look too far and wide for a new job. I quickly happened to pick up a job working as a janitor downtown in Cincinnati. My aunt texted me an address telling me to work there, knowing I needed some more hours to work for the 4th of July weekend. My aunt Jenny put in a good word for me and they had accepted me in. My manager at this new job, Robert, merely texted me an address and told me all the duties for the job site. When you make it to this address, you'll find the key under the doormat. Be sure to clean all the floors and wash and mop all the bathrooms on the upper floors. And don't forget to place the key underneath the doormat after you leave. Taking in all the instructions, I packed up a bag full of all the things I need to do the job well and went on my way. Soon enough, I was headed to my destination. I reached the address and looked up at the house. It was a very old vintage house, as if it was built back in the 1900s. It certainly had an ominous feeling to it. As I instructed my manager, I picked up the mat to find the key hidden beneath it. I grabbed the key and unlocked the door. When I opened the door for the first time, I swear I felt a cold draft blow right past me as I was walking through the door and stepping inside the house. Chalking it up to the fact that the house had been closed for a while, I shook my head to get rid of the odd sensation that I had felt entering the place. Instead, I decided to focus on the task I had at hand, the tasks that had been assigned to me. I decided to start with wiping down the whole of the place before moving on to the floor. I pulled out the spray bottles I had brought along with me from my bag and began wiping down the front windows first. Call it weird timing or coincidence, but as soon as I got to working on the windows, I could see cop cars racing down the street. But as I knew this was a part of town that had a bad reputation of killings and break-ins on this side, I ignored it in favor of focusing on my work, even though it felt oddly almost like a warning of sorts. As I was mopping the kitchen floor, I heard a knock at the door. I had not been told someone else would be stopping by as I was there on work. So, a little curious, I walked over to open the door and see who it could be. There was a middle-aged man at the door, looking very drunk and obviously homeless, begging for money. I'm sorry to bother you, but I really need a few dollars to get back home. Could you please spare me some? I knew damn well it was just a ploy of these drunkards to get their hands on some quick cash so they could get their next fix. Thinking him to be just one of these con bums, I was just about to close the door in his face, but he stuck his foot in the door, making me halt in the process. Now hold on here a minute. I know you're not the owner of this house, he let out, trying to force his way into the house. God knows why. I tried to push him back out the door, but he persisted, trying to force his way in. Now I was getting really annoyed. Not only had he interrupted my work, but now he was incessantly trying to force his way in and wasting my time in the process. On top of it, he was actively trying not to let me get my job done. Thoroughly annoyed, I pulled out my pistol and pointed it in his face, shouting at him and ordering him to leave this place. Are you going to let me finish up my work, or do I have to blow the back crust off that head of yours? I screamed in his face making him stumble back in fear and alarm at seeing the weapon in my hands, finally allowing me to move the door once again. The man ran off, yelling and cursing at me as I closed the door behind him. I started my work once again and began to finish mopping up the kitchen floor. After finishing the ground floor, I decided to head upstairs and quickly finish the job. As I was making my way up the old, noisy stairs, I heard some footsteps coming from above me, walking from room to room. Now that was really alarming and concerning for me. I wasn't told anyone would be in the house while I was there, so I didn't think that it was someone that lived there. So immediately on my guard, I raced up the stairs to confront and catch whoever it was roaming around the property, surely trespassing. However, I was unable to do so. When I got to the top floor, there was no one there. 
I checked and double checked every single room on the top floor, but I didn't find anyone there. And neither did I feel anything missing or out of place. So it didn't look like someone had entered the house before and taken anything from there. It didn't even look like someone had been there at all. Now I was sure it was all in my mind and I was hearing things after that weird incident with the drunkard earlier. (sighs) Maybe I'm under a lot of stress and I just need a little bit of rest or something, I thought to myself, scratching my head in confusion. Shaking my head to get rid of the weird stump in the moment, I decided to quickly finish my work so I could get back home and have some rest before stress got even worse or something. In my haste to getting upstairs and catching the intruder, I hadn't even brought my stuff upstairs and had left them on the stairs on the way up. I went back down to grab my stuff and then returned to the top floor and started working with a new vigor. I was wiping down the desk in the hallway when once again I heard heavy footsteps. This time around, they were coming from even farther above. They were coming from the attic, and it seemed like they were just walking from one side of it to the other without stopping. I turned to check up on the attic this time. I used the mop stick to push open the attic door. It was pitch black inside, no light whatsoever, and the light from the outside wasn't enough to penetrate what was going on inside. I didn't want to enter the place to switch the light on before seeing the inside a bit more clearly. So thinking quick on my feet, I fished out my cell phone from my pocket and switched on its light. I turned the phone around to light up the room, expecting to spot someone peeping down at me. But there was nothing there. No one at all. Still, just to be sure, I decided to get up in the attic and do a thorough search in there. Just before I was finally about to climb into the attic, I heard glass breaking downstairs. Immediately on my guard once again, I quickly jumped back down and ran down the stairs as fast as I possibly could. When I got to the first floor, I was once again left stumped as there was nothing there too. I didn't find any broken glass anywhere. I checked all the rooms and found all of them were without anything broken. None of the windows were broken either. Now I was seriously questioning my sanity at this point. Was I really going mad? Or was someone playing with me or something? But that was only up until I heard someone screaming for help in the basement. Decidedly annoyed at the weird tug of war situation that the house was putting me in, as well as a bit worried for my safety, I pulled out my pistol again before I started to make my way into the basement, gripping my gun in both hands and waiting for someone to actually jump out at me. As I turned the corner to the landing of the stairs going down, a place that I hadn't been before, I saw glass scattered all over the floor and a cabinet laying on its side. Uh, So I'm not losing my mind. There's definitely something going on in this house, I thought to myself, letting out a breath of relief. But in the very next moment, that relief was sucked right out of me again because the presence of the broken glass meant that yes, There definitely was something going on inside this house. Something that I didn't know. Something I had no idea about. And something that could be far more terrible than me just losing my mind due to stress. Something that was about to be revealed in front of me in quite a short amount of time. I walked just past the washing machine and saw something I was not expecting to see. It made me stumble and stop in my tracks shocked and a little scared at the discovery. There were legs peeking from under the stairway. I stepped closer to the body to see it clearly, but it was too dark under the stairs to make out what was under there. I pulled out my phone once again and turned on its flashlight. With the light on flashing alongside the body, it was clear that it was halfway hanging out from the stairs. I grabbed the legs and pulled the body out from under the stairs and I was in for another shock, something I didn't think was possible at this point. I recognized the body right away. It was the same drunkard that had knocked at the door earlier that day, and now he was lying, probably dead, inside the house right in front of my eyes. It was not a good thing, and suddenly I realized it was not shaping up to be a good idea to take on this job, but it was already too late anyway. I couldn't turn back time no matter how much I wished to be anywhere else but at that house. So sucking up my displeasure, I went on to do the responsible thing. 
I grabbed my phone and called 911. Or at least I tried to, because now my phone wasn't working. I tried again and again, but I was unable to call, and it made no sense at all. Even if there was no network or signals, I should have been able to call the emergency contact number whenever I wanted or needed to, as long as the battery was charged, and my phone's battery was definitely charged enough. I had just charged it fully before coming to this job, and suddenly everything became a bit too much for me. Nothing was normal, and suddenly my sixth sense was in overdrive, urging me to get out of there as soon as possible. Something definitely abnormal was going on in there. I quickly ran back upstairs and tried to make my way out the door, but it wouldn't even budge, no matter how hard I tried to force it open. Leaving the door behind, I ran over and tried to open the windows, but that was in vain too. They wouldn't open either. It was as if nothing was working. I was now starting to feel as if I was in some kind of strange funhouse, except for the fun part. There was nothing fun about the situation I had found myself in. It was anything but fun. Panicking a little bit by then, I picked up the chair from the kitchen and tossed it at the window, hoping to break the glass and get the hell out of there. It didn't even make a crack in the glass. I was left standing there in the middle of the room, wondering what to do next when things took another turn for the worse. Suddenly, all the lights in the house started to dim and flicker, making the situation even more eerie than it was before, and as if that wasn't enough. I started hearing heavy walking back and forth from room to room upstairs again. Who the hell are you? What the hell are you doing here? I yelled out loud, now getting really scared of all the strange things happening at once. It couldn't all be a coincidence. Considering that there was seemingly no way for me to get out of the house, I instead decided to face off against whoever the hell was inside once and for all. It was no use just being scared. I had to take action. I pulled out my pistol once again, thanking my past self for having the foresight to bring it along with me, and fired up at the roof, trying to hit whoever was walking around above me. Abruptly, the sounds coming from upstairs stopped, making me believe that I probably hit whoever was up there. My belief didn't stay long when I suddenly realized that it wasn't just the upstairs that had gone deathly silent. It was everything around me. I couldn't hear any noise from the front of the house or anyone screaming or cussing outside. I peeked out the window only to see dozens of people standing still, watching me silently. It decidedly looked as if I was in a Twilight Zone episode. As I was looking outside, suddenly I heard the sound of the door opening up. I hurried over to it and stepped out looking both ways outside the porch, and no one was there. None of the people I had spotted watching me just seconds ago. I started to walk and try to get away from the house, only to see those silent zombie-like people appear once again. Only this time around, they were moving towards me, blocking my way from getting out. Panicking at their sudden appearance, I took out my pistol and fired at the nearest of them. It seemed to just pass right through them. I pulled some rapid fires, but with the same result. My bullets didn't seem to hurt any of them. Without noticing all this time, I was slowly moving back towards the house, and suddenly I was right back at the door that I had just escaped from. In my effort to escape the weird zombie-like creatures, I entered the house again and closed the door, locking them out, but also locking myself in. I rushed to the window once again to see them outside. They were standing there silently, just looking at me. I was just thinking about what to do next when the lights started flickering rapidly all at once, and then just as suddenly, the lights went out. The room went black, and before I could figure out how to get the lights back on, I could hear something coming down the stairs towards me. And whatever it was coming towards me, it must have been very heavy, and I didn't have any more bullets left to take it down. I moved to hide behind the couch as the room had already gone pitch black, and I couldn't figure out a way to make it outside. I couldn't even risk using the flashlight on my phone this time in fear of attracting the oncomer's attention. I saw it walk out to the hallway, sniffing the air and rubbing its long nails on the side of the wall. It was now or never at this point. So I took a deep breath and decided to take a chance on it. I took my shot and rushed to make my way upstairs, tossing the empty gun at it, striking it in the face. I ran up into one of the rooms and locked myself inside, hoping to stay there until the creature could leave or go back from wherever it had come from, leaving me free to escape. 
But alas, it was not to be. I could hear the thing coming up the stairs, angry and ready to rip my head off if it managed to catch me. Everything went silent just before the thing burst into the room, breaking the door off the hinges and ready to pounce at me and pull me apart. Thinking quickly, I realized that I didn't want to die from that creature's hands, so I took matters into my own hands. I spotted a half-open window and the idea came to me. I swiftly pulled the blankets off the bed and hurried to wrap myself in them and jumped out the nearest window, landing on the sidewalk. The blankets didn't break my fall as much as I had hoped to. So I lay there, groaning in pain as I watched people walk over to me, staring at me with surprise and pity in their eyes. I looked up at the window I had just jumped from and saw the thing in the window shapeshift into an old lady dressed up in late vintage clothes. I couldn't even feel surprised at that, but I did feel the warm blood running out of me as I witnessed everyone pulling out their cell phones, recording me and taking photos as I laid there on the sidewalk, dying.